preseason winners and losers for the Dallas Cowboys. Start things off with some winners. Well, of course, Cheeto makes this list, right? That interception was absolutely beautiful. We showed it to you at the top of the show. We'll do it again during the loop here on Facebook. Went sky high, tipped it to himself with one hand, and then pulled it down. That is what the Cowboys want to see out of Awuzie. I think he can be a true number one corner, or at least a starting caliber corner for the Dallas Cowboys. That is exactly what Dallas needs out of Awuzie. That type of playmaking, that type of reliable coverage ability there. Absolutely athletic play right there. Great job by Awuzie. He and Byron Jones, I think, have looked great so far this preseason. So, folks, let me know. Who do you think will be the Cowboys' number one cornerback? Type in B in the comments if you think it's Byron. Type in C if you think it's uh, Cheeto. There's really no wrong answer here. You can go with A and pick both of them. I guess D is then none as well. But Aruzi, I thought, looked really good in that one. He's an obvious winner to me after that highlight reel play. Next up is Randy Gregory. Look, just getting on the field for Randy is enough to put him in, in the winner's category in this one. And although his... Play is not going to show up in the box score. He's not going to be credited for any sacks or tackles for loss or even quarterback hits, although one false start I think did, did negate a, what I thought was going to be a surefire sack for Randy. He got plenty of push and enough disruption that every time you saw Gregory getting near the backfield, he was beating his man, I thought. Now, it didn't end up in a, in a sack, but that's the nature of the NFL. So overall, a very promising first appearance for Randy Gregory, making his long away to return to the field. I thought he looked good, and as I said on Thursday's Cowboys report, you're going to see Tyrone Crawford go to DT on third downs with Gregory next to him. That is exactly what we saw in this one in nickel sets. We'll stick on the defensive line here, Taco Charlton. Now, Taco did make a presence in the box score in this one. Three tackles, a sack, a tackle for loss, and had that forced fumble when Byron Jones recovered it. Look, the Bengals' offensive line is, how do I put this delicately, pretty bad um so you gotta kind of take it with a grain of salt here but taco made an impact he looked the part of a first round pick i was very pleased by how well charlton played that was one of the things i wanted to see hey i wanted to see some of these young defensive ends make some impact we saw demarcus lawrence be disruptive even though he didn't even get a sack either we saw Gr gregory show some promise and we saw taco actually get a sack i'm very excited about these cowboys defensive ends Tank and Tyrone and Gregory and Tapper, Charlton, Dorrance Armstrong, plus Coney Ealy. That is a really, really deep defensive end group. Don't be surprised if one of them, probably Tapper or Ealy, ends up getting shopped once we get to 53-man roster cuts. To offense now, a lot of guys I think are, are fair and worth mentioning here. Dak Prescott, one of them. But how about Darius Jackson? Came in after Bo Scarborough left the game with the hip injury and looked really good. Six carries, 42 yards, chipped in four receptions for 22 yards. Jackson helped himself in terms of his chances of making the Cowboys roster. Now, when you look at the running back depth chart, Zeke, of course, is your, is your number one guy. Rod Smith is your very clear number two. Then it's Darius Jackson versus Bo Scarborough. Maybe the Cowboys try and keep both. Maybe they only keep one. If that's the case, it's Scarborough versus Jackson. And Scarborough is a better pure runner in my eyes. I think he has more talent, more upside. But Darius Jackson can do more for you in the passing game and can do, most importantly, more for you on special teams. And when you're at the bottom of the roster when it comes to the 53-man unit, the special team stuff matters. And that's a big reason why I wouldn't be all that surprised if Darius Jackson actually finds a way to beat out Bo Scarborough and or the Cowboys stash Bo on IR with that injured hip. All right, one final guy here. I know not everyone likes Terrence Williams, and I get it. His stock took hit in the offseason, but he was pretty good in this one. Had the nice touchdown catch, had another good grab as well. T. Will is a veteran right now for this receiving core, and he does not have the upside of a Michael Gallup, but he's still starting at wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys. He is going to make this roster. He'll play a role, especially early on in the year. As of right now, he is still your number two wide receiver. Hearns, by the way, put quite a bit in the slot with Cole Beasley out. Gallup also started on the outside in this one. Those are your top four guys. Tavon Austin will get plenty of run. I think Dante Thompson will play some as well. Then it's guys like Lance Lenore, Noah Brown fighting for a role on the roster. I'll also make note, Mikel McKay has outplayed and outsnapped Katie Cannon as well. As of right now, McKay is the next best of the other guys overall. 
So folks, let me know which player you think was the biggest preseason winner in Week 2. Was it a Taco Charlton? Was it Darius Jackson? T Terrence Williams? Was it somebody that I didn't mention? Let me know in the comments section. I'll be sure to respond. On now to the loser side of things, and we'll start things off here. Well, the offensive line was a complete and utter disaster once the starters came out. And perhaps the biggest loser of all was Chaz Green. Guys, he's bad right now. I, I know you know this. We know it. Everyone in the universe knows it. Chaz Green is a mess right now. He has zero confidence out there. He doesn't look comfortable playing tackle. He's been slow to move. He's getting get beat by power and by speed. He At this point for Chaz Green... His play has become so bad, it's very tough to get any type of feel for the other offensive players around him because he is ruining plays by himself. Chaz Green cannot make this roster. Frankly, he should probably be cut right now. So, folks, let me know. Type in 1 if you want Chaz Green cut or type in 2 if you want Chaz Green cut. I don't know anyone that still wants Chaz Green on this roster. I've tried to be patient with Chaz Green. I think I'm out. There's just no way you can justify putting Chaz Green out there. The issue is for the Cowboys, there's really no other reliable offense lineman out there unless you want, do you want Luke Jokel on this roster? He's basically Chaz Green but was drafted earlier. It's a mess right there. I think what you see the Cowboys try and do is near roster cut down time, go out and add another offensive lineman, be an interior tackle because as of right now, I'm not feeling confident about this backup unit whatsoever. And that includes, by the way, Cam Fleming. Now, I kind of had high hopes for Cam Fleming. He was pretty good for the Patriots at, at times last year. He didn't fare very well against the Bengals. He got beat quite a bit as well. He got manhandled by Carl Lawson on one sack. Lawson got up inside his pads and just drove him back with one hand after beating him with some speed as well. Fleming has got to be better for the Cowboys at their swing tackle spot. He is supposed to be their number six offensive lineman. And as of right now, I don't feel that confident. I, I, I think he'll bounce back in week three. I like Joe Looney as an interior guy, but Corin Kerr, I think we saw with him, was awful. Kadeem Edwards, Damian Mama, the other guys that no one has heard of, those aren't reliable players. So if I'm the Cowboys, when we get to you know two weeks from now and we're cutting down rosters and, and players are getting cut, I am calling and picking up the phone every chance I get to find another offensive lineman because the Cowboys need one badly right now. All right, one more loser. We'll go player here, then we'll go to positional uh, group after that. Mike White at quarterback. The offensive line hasn't helped at all, but the offense, but Mike White just hasn't looked all that good overall for the, for the Dallas Cowboys. And I think it's actually to the point where Maybe you don't need to have Mike White on the active roster. He hasn't wowed at all for me. Now, again, O-line has held him back quite a bit. But maybe you can sneak Mike White onto the practice squad. And if that's the case, that frees up a roster spot for another wide receiver, another offensive lineman, a fourth tight end, <laughs> Rico Gathers, who we'll get to here in just a second. So the Cowboys, I know, are high on Mike White. They like to get they like to give their, their draft picks chances. But with the offensive line playing poorly, I don't know if you're going to see a team snipe Mike White if you put him on waivers. If that's the case, try and do what you did with Matt Moore all those years ago. Try and sneak him onto the practice squad, and hopefully the end result this time is different. We'll talk defense now, namely the secondary, because it's bad. Obviously, Byron Jones is great. Cheeto has, has been fantastic, too. Hopefully, Xavier Woods is healthy. Jeff Heath, I thought, played pretty well as well, kind of flying around all over the field. Jordan Lewis, Anthony Brown, frankly, were not that great last night. Now, both those guys are fighting for the nickel role. I'd lead more towards Jordan Lewis, but he's been a little iffy at times, and Anthony Brown has been, I think, even worse, quite frankly. Kevon Frazier is fine. Tyree Robinson was the first guy off the bench, but the issue is when the Cowboys went to their backups and their second and third string guys, the secondary wasn't stopping anyone. Jameel Shadows, before he got hurt, was not very good. Cam Kelly can barely get on the field. Marquis Snuff is not that good of a player. Donovan Alumba, I thought, has been pretty bad overall. Trevarius Ward, Mike White, they haven't made any plays. Duke Thomas has been burned a couple times as well. So we've seen it the past two weeks. The Cowboys take an early lead, and then the defense gives up the points because the secondary just isn't good. Of course, what do you expect there when you get to the second string unit beyond Lewis and Anthony Brown, and you've got a couple of late-round picks and a bunch of undrafted free agents. 
as of right now, if the Cowboys suffer a lot of injuries at DB, I would be very, very concerned. Go sign George Iloka. Do it right now. All right, one final loser. I know you guys won't like it, but please hear me out before you call me a hater in the comment section. Can you just do that for me? All right, thank you. Based only on his play, Rico Gathers should be a winner. All right, I like what I saw out of Rico for the most part last night. Now, he wasn't perfect, contrary to what some of you guys think. The blocking wasn't as great. He also ran one route where he ran into Dalton Schultz. I'm pretty sure it was his fault as well. But he made that great mossing catch. He led the team in receiving yards. What Rico can bring is that passing threat, especially in the red zone, that I don't think a Blake Jarwin, a Jeff Swaim, or a Dalton Schultz can bring as of right now. The, he's still raw, still inconsistent. As he said, he is a, he is a flash player, and he's still fighting for, for that last roster spot with a guy like Lance Lenore or whatever. But despite Rico making all those great plays, the Cowboys staff and front office really weren't that effusive in their praise of Rico Gathers. Now, the Cowboys staff wants, this is what the staff wants, not what I'm saying I want. I would put get Gathers on this team. The staff wants to put their tight ends in this Jason Witten type box. They want them to be able to block almost first and foremost and then catch as well. And you think about the guys they have. Jeff Swain fits that mold. Dalton Schultz fits that mold. Blake Jarwin a little bit more closer to Rico, but more of a hybrid of those two types of guys there. The staff does not trust him for blocking, and they don't trust him on special teams. Dalton Schultz got those reps first and foremost. Then it was Rico near the end of the fourth quarter. That's a big deal when it comes to the last roster spot. And most importantly, Jerry Jones sums, summed it up so well. Jerry Jones says he, of course, referring to Rico, blocks well when he's blocking the right man, which, by the way, is exactly what I said yesterday, and you all got mad at me on YouTube. But the angst comes when you're sitting there looking at the guy that's not on the roster because you kept him, i.e. Rico, on the roster. That's a pretty clear sign that, hey, we're going to cut Rico. We're, we're just not going to put him on this roster. Which, by the way, Jerry's comments are actually the exact opposite of the way I feel. You're going to put a Mike White, a Lance Lenore, a Noah Brown on the roster instead of Rico Gathers. And my fear is that Rico goes somewhere else and he actually does turn into Antonio Gates. Like, that's my fear is that, this, that there's some talent there, and I think that there is, and the staff either A, can't develop it, B, don't want to develop it, or C, he'll go somewhere else and then thrive. Now, it's not a battle of, it's not a battle of Rico versus Dalton Schultz. Schultz is making this roster. The Cowboys invested more than they put into Rico with Schultz alone as a fourth-round pick. Swaim and Jarwin are your top two guys. So I know some of you think Rico should be the number one guy, and I get that from a passing perspective. But as of right now, Rico is the number four tight end. He has to find a way not to beat out those guys above him, but to get the nod over a Mike White, over a Lance Lenore, and maybe even over a ninth offensive lineman, given how bad that play is right now. So I would like to see Rico make the roster, even if it's only four or five snaps a game, as that end zone threat. But from the Cowboys' perspective, I don't think they view that as worth it. And beyond that, even if they roster Rico, because he doesn't bring you much on special teams, is even going to be active if you put him on the 53-man roster. That's where we sit with Rico Gathers. Play-wise, a winner. But in terms of where the Cowboys view him, he is still a loser after a great showing, or at least a promising showing at times in Week 2 of the preseason. No mailbag today, folks. Sorry about that one there. I'll do a Twitter Q&A later tonight. Hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny with any questions. I've already got a, a bunch that I'll tweet out later tonight. If you missed anything, don't worry. We'll play it again here in just a second. But until then, we'll see you next time.